everyone, my name is Zihao and I'm actually a senior solution architect with Aqua Security based out of Singapore. So today I'm going to show you how you can very easily deploy the Aqua Cloud Native Security Platform, uh, better known as Aqua CSV, in AWS Fargate. So Aqua today already offers many different ways to deploy Aqua CSV and deploying Aqua CSV on top of AWS Fargate is actually one of those very well supported methods. In fact, Aqua already has a cloud formation template to help you deploy the Aqua console as well as the Aqua gateways in your Fargate environment. You can actually access the cloud formation template from a GitHub page that you see right now on the screen. So let us just quickly look at what you can expect from the end of the cloud formation deployment. At the end of the cloud formation deployment, you are going to end up with a production ready Aqua CSP installation with an Aqua server deployed behind an Amazon application load balancer. You will also have an Aqua database created on an AWS RDS instance, which includes seven days of rolling backups, as well as a pair of Aqua gateways, each on a separate subnet deployed behind a network load balancer. So let us now quickly look at the prerequisites for deploying Aqua CSP in AWS Fargate. All right, so first of all, you will need an ECS cluster on top of a VPC with at least two subnet, right? So this needs to be created before you actually make use of the cloud formation template. You will also need your Aqua security credentials to access the Aqua private registry in order to retrieve the required Aqua CSV container images, as well as your license token, which you can retrieve from your Aqua success portal. And remember, before we actually launch the cloud formation template, after retrieving the Aqua console and gateway image, you need to push them into your AWS Elastic Container Registry so that the cloud formation process can retrieve these images during installation in order to make sure the installation will be successful. Now that you have all the prerequisites in place, we can start to perform the cloud formation installation of the Aqua CSP platform. So you can just very simply click on the launch tag link over here and this is going to bring you directly into your AWS account where you can start to run the cloud formation template. Right, so, so one of the things that you notice here is that you know by clicking on the link, uh, it's going to help you populate the Amazon S3 URL where the cloud formation template is located. Right, so this is definitely correct. So uh, there's actually nothing we need to modify. So we can just go ahead and proceed into the next step. Right, so once you're in the next step, uh, you are going to be prompted to specify details of your cloud formation stack. Right, so the first thing you're going to see here is the stack name. So we're going to just go ahead and give our stack a name. I'm just going to call it Aqua. Next up, next up the cloud formation template is going to ask you about the information regarding the ECS cluster that you have created beforehand as part of the prerequisites. Right, so I'm going to put in the name of my ECS cluster and that is Aqua CSP and then I'm going to select the VPC ID where my Aqua CSP will be installed. Right, uh, and I'm going to now put in the CIDR. So I was actually using the default values. So uh, this is what I'm going to put in. So as far as the ECS instance subnets are concerned, uh, do remember the re prerequisites is you actually need to make sure your ECS cluster has got two subnets uh, and that is exactly what I've created, right? So I'm going to go ahead and select those two subnets. I will also need to select the Aqua load balancer subnets, right? So I'm going to just quickly put it in. And then we have got the AWS region. So in this case, I'm going to make use of AP Southeast 1. Right, so in the next section, uh, we are going to have Aqua specific configuration. The first thing that we have to put in is actually the web console source. Right, so this is actually um, a definition of the range of IP addresses that are allowed to access the Aqua console. Right, so in my environment, I'm going to allow everyone permissions to hit my Aqua console. But bear in mind, you know, in a production environment, I'll strongly recommend that you will only put in the IP address range of your enterprise environment to make sure only uh, authorized IP address range can access the Aqua console. And then we're going to tell 
the cloud formation template where exactly is my aqua server image right so i've actually pushed this into my aws ecr so let me just quickly look for it All right it's right here okay so i'm gonna put it in and then i am also gonna specify the location of my gateway image and finally we come to the last section and this is where we put in the configuration for our rds database All right so i am going to go ahead and put in my rds username my rds password so please remember to make sure that this is not a simple password it needs to be complex to allow us to better protect the airport database and then of course you have got the rds instance type so by default we're actually using a t2 medium over here but uh, again this should be modified according to the size of your environment uh, so if you have got a really large environment uh, you have to size it up accordingly and i do strongly recommend that you access the airport documentation uh, and because in the airport documentation uh, we do have a sizing guide to help you understand the kind of resources you should allocate uh, the RDS database in order to make sure that the aqua database that you're provisioning here doesn't end up becoming a bottleneck uh, if your environment is uh, large enough right so in the case of uh, multi AZ RDS I will also highly recommend that you set this to, a tr to, to be true right so this is to make sure that we have additional resiliency for our aqua database so once you have populated all the fields that the cloud formation template is expecting from us we can go ahead and go on to the next step right so i'm gonna skip all these additional stack options and finally i come to the last step where i can do a quick review of the details uh, of the stack that i i'm actually creating for echo csp so if everything looks good i am gonna go ahead to create the stack So this is gonna take uh, a few minutes, right? So, uh, so along the way, I'm gonna refresh this on and off just to make sure that uh, the the stack will be created successfully, right? So just hang on here, and we're gonna get back once the stack is okay. So now our stack has finally finished deploying, and you can see one of the output that I am getting from the cloud formation deployment is the url to the aqua console that uh, has just been created right so i'm going to go ahead and click on this url and it's going to prompt me for my password right so i'm going to put in uh, the initial password and so this is where you have to put in the aqua license which you will get from your aqua success portal right so i'm going to just paste it in and then i'm going to click on accept right so if the license is successfully accepted you will be redirected into the aqua csp dashboard right so once you see this dashboard you know your installation is successful and let's do some basic validation right so the first thing i'm going to check is i'm going to go on uh, into systems and i'm going to click on aqua gateways okay so you can see that uh, the two instances of the aqua gateway that was deployed by the cloud formation template uh, is now both connected and they are working well right so i'm going to check another thing so i'm going to go into settings and i'm going to go into supportability i'm going to click on db i'm going to click and i'm going to click on test database connection right so the connection to the database was established successfully as well so that's it uh, we have now everything is, seems to be working correctly uh, and it just means that now you have a production ready aqua csp installation in fargate and you can now start to go ahead and install enforcers in order to provide visibility as well as to protect your cloud native workloads right so thank you and have a nice day